I want to invite you to join me again for another day of homemaking. This morning I'm going to make some einkorn sourdough crepes. I fed my starter last night with a whole bunch of einkorn. I did some whole wheat and some all purpose, just kind of random, I didn't measure anything. So I'm going to do a cup of starter, eight eggs, three quarters of a cup of milk, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and three tablespoons of melted rendered lard. I'm going to try a mascarpone and cream cheese filling with maple syrup. I have not tried it this way, but I think it'll be really good. I'm also gonna add a little bit of vanilla. For lunch today, I'm just going to make up a really simple gnocchi skillet. So I'm gonna brown up some sausage, cut up a butternut squash, roast that in the oven, and then make an einkorn gnocchi and just toss them together with a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper. I like a simple meal like this because you can throw in whatever you have. So sometimes I like to throw in a green or an herb if you have it from the garden. Today, I don't have a whole lot of vegetables, so it's just gonna really feature the roasted squash and the sausage. To make my gnocchi, I'm going to mill up some einkorn berries. I'm gonna add an egg and some cooked potatoes. I didn't do any baked potatoes, I just didn't have the time. So instead I just got some peeled potatoes going in a little bit of water so they can steam really quickly and I will combine them all. Packing up a little bit of sausage for breakfast tomorrow. I don't need all of it in the skillet. Some of the things I want to get done today are hang up some photos in the boys' room. I have been wanting to do this for a while because we moved rooms all around in this house and the room that used to be the girls' room is now the boys' room and I wanted to bring some photos of them into there. We did the same thing with our girls' room but now that they're out of there, the walls are completely blank up in the boys' room. So we're gonna do that. I also am going to share with you later in this video after lunch some design plans for this room, the living room, because it was a dining room before. We basically just moved all of the furniture from the living room into here. We didn't really transform it into a proper living room. So it still looks like a dining room, but with living room furniture in it. So I wanna change that. So we're gonna talk about that. And then this evening I'll make dinner as well. So that's the plan for the day. I wanna say thank you to today's video sponsor, Fracture. I was introduced to Fracture, which is a company that takes your photos and transforms them into glass prints. So it's essentially the frame and the print all in one. It makes it really easy to hang it up, make arrangements. They actually have a feature on their website where you can choose a gallery wall, drag all of your photos into it, and then see how it will actually look whenever it's up on the wall. So it makes a little mock-up that you can actually see. And then the coolest thing is it actually comes with a template. So you can put that template up on the wall and it makes hanging very easy. A lot of the guesswork taken out of it. Whenever we hung our other gallery wall in the house, it was definitely a lot more challenging to get that all right. And this just makes it really easy for you. It needs to be over a dresser or something. This dresser, I don't mind replacing. 
And so I was thinking like, I'll keep my eye out. I really wanted to have it before this, but I couldn't find it. For a shorter, longer vintage dresser and then have it above it. So you can center on this wall or this wall, but I'm thinking probably this wall. 17. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. It needs to go this way. It's a little, yeah, like it needs to crank a little. There you go. No, I don't want you to see where there's too many holes in the wall? Never mind the other holes. Oh. So, on the day whenever I actually ordered these prints, I took the boys outside, I put overalls on them and just took them around the farm and got some nice cohesive photos of them. That way they would look pretty on their wall in my opinion, but also really bring out the boy when I'm used to seeing them climbing on gates and ladders and in their overalls. And so I thought that it really looked cute how we got the final photos. I really like the quality of these photos. Whenever I opened the box right away, they just looked so clear and pretty and clean. And I really like the simple frameless look, especially for their room. I definitely have a lot of things I want to do in their room. And this is the first step. It adds a little bit of interest to the walls and then also reminds them that they're all best buddies no matter what. They were having fun that day, even days whenever they're maybe not getting along as well, they can see these really cute pictures of them enjoying life on the farm. So whether you're turning a wall into a work of art or decorating for the holiday season, Fracture helps you to brighten up your space with moments that matter. Now they are offering my viewers 22% off your first order with my code BOON22. So cute. Boys, you'll have to excuse the noise. The boys are napping. We've been doing all of our nap times outside but today is actually too cold. Most days in Missouri in winter, if you just wear some coveralls and a coat, you can actually go outside and it's totally fine. Today it's a little bit more uncomfortable. And so we decided we'll just do this day in. So it's pretty loud, <laughs> but I wanna talk about designing a room. One of the aspects of homemaking whether you take this to the extreme and your house looks like a magazine or whether you just have a nice curated home that doesn't have a whole lot of clutter, that you add a little pillow or arrangement of flowers every once in a while, some kind of design and making your home comfortable with making it pretty is part of it. Now, like I said, this can be something very minimal for some people. It all just depends on your interests. So for me, home decor is something that I love. Like a good evening for me would be sitting down next to the fire or maybe in the bathtub, looking through home decor images, whether it be in a book or on Pinterest or on Instagram. I personally love it. And so of course I'm gonna be spending more time and effort thinking about things like this. For you, it might just be decluttering and getting a new blanket for your couch or sewing some drapes or something. So for me right now, this room is an area that needs my attention. It needs a mom touch to it because it has recently changed function. So as you can see behind me, there is a painting with food on it. I have a pie safe in this room, a hutch, all very dining room-esque things. I have a plate arrangement on the wall and we have furniture and rugs in here because it's a living room. Now it's cozy. It's great. I actually love this room because it is south facing and it has this huge picture window. Now, when we first moved into this house, my plan was no curtains because we don't live where anybody can really see. We live very rural. And so I'm not worried about like a neighbor peeking in the window, but I have since added curtains to a few rooms and I actually really like it. Not because I need to block out light or anything like that because we just let the light fly in in the summer. I've never had any kind of room darkening shades or anything, and so it's not really that. I like the height that they provide. So when we added curtains to what is now our bedroom that used to be the living room, it created this height that drew your eye up and it made the room feel complete and not naked. So I love the trim in this room. It has this ornate Victorian trim, and I do not want to cover it up but I also really like how it looks whenever my eye is drawn up. It feels like everything is just stuck on the bottom of this room. I don't really know how to describe it, except for that. Like when you walk in here, it just feels uneven. It feels like everything's down. 
and I need something to draw my eye up. And the curtains with the gold rods that we did over in our bedroom really helped with that. And so I wanna do the same thing in here. I actually ordered some really inexpensive curtains and I bought some pleat tape and some pleat hooks and I'm gonna create pinch pleat curtains. Now I could have gotten the same Ikea ones that I purchased for our bedroom, but I wanted to go more of a linen oatmeal color in this room as opposed to white. And they didn't make those Ikea curtains in that color. So I'm going to do that in here. I'm gonna use the same gold rods, the same gold rings. Because these two rooms are connected, now they are separated by pocket doors, but most of the time those doors are open, I did want them to flow and have a very similar style. Another dilemma in this room is what to do with the hutch. We purchased this hutch from the previous owner because it was in this place. It was going to be very difficult to move. It's so heavy. We actually did have to move it out of the house to refinish the floors. It's ridiculously heavy. Plus it's just really cool. And if this room's ever a dining room again, I'm going to regret that I got rid of it. And so I thought of a few things and I think the consensus is that where the pie safe is, I'm going to move the hutch there and put books in it. So it'll be a bookshelf. It won't display china, now we could. But I found that this actually is not the best china displaying hutch anyways because of where the wood all hits, you just really can't see it. I would prefer a more open hutch for something like displaying china. So I don't think I'm really gonna mind. Now, where I'm gonna put the china, I don't really know. I might pack it away in boxes for now. I'm not sure because we don't have a proper dining room anymore. But this is gonna act as a bookshelf where the pie safe is. The wall where the hutch is, I'm going to do something to incorporate a TV. Now, it might be in an armoire. I might do a smaller frame TV and put it in a gallery wall. I was thinking I could hide it really easily that way. If we put picture frame molding on the walls and it came up to about halfway and then above that put a gallery wall and I would just sneak the frame TV in with a bunch of other pictures and you might not really notice. And so that's probably the plan. The next issue is furniture. And this is where I always have such a difficult time because I hate making big decisions like that. And this is what makes me drag my feet on all makeovers of any kind. Now currently I do have this navy blue couch that I really like and I have this couch that I'm sitting on that we painted. But I do think we're going to need a little bit more furniture in here and I would like some chairs. I have my eye on a few things but it's really hard for me to make a decision and so we'll see if I actually do that anytime soon or just arrange this. But I would like a very traditional look in here. That is what I'm going for. I like a lot of art and frames and I want some lamps. This lamp that we have here currently, it's more of a, at least I think, I'm not an expert on design, but it seems modern to me. I want something with lampshades that is a lot more of the traditional style. Whenever I look through Pinterest or design books, I find that I'm gravitating more and more and more to that traditional style. And so that's what I want to create in here with a lot of collected pieces. So that's the plan going forward. I do hope to execute this whole thing in the next couple months. I wanted to show you a few of my favorite design books and talk through how I use these. I love design books. Now, one thing I have found is that you can search through these books endlessly or Pinterest endlessly and you will never find a room exactly like the one you have. I feel like sometimes we wanna just see the exact thing we're thinking. So I have these certain chairs in mind and they're a linen color and I wanna see linen chairs with this color couch but then I want it to be sitting in a room just like this and to an extent you can see furniture placement in books on Pinterest but you can't see the exact thing that you're thinking. And I feel like I'm always hoping that I will and I, I don't. And so what I, the way I use books like this, this is Feels Like Home by Marion Parsons or Miss Mustard Seed, I love this book, is I go through and I study little details. So I can look through the same book 25 times. One time I'm thinking about wallpaper. One time I'm thinking about furniture placement. One time I'm thinking about where to place end tables and lamps and the styles of lamps and where they place the TV or a hutch. I find myself thinking about a little detail each time with a different eye each time I'm thinking of it. It's the same way when I go to thrift shops. I can go in the same thrift shop three weeks in a row. Even if they have nothing new, usually I'm thinking about something new 
and that makes me see everything all differently. She's spotting her picture frame molding here, and I like that element for this living room design, so there's something for me to note mentally. What I really like about picture frame molding is it anchors art above it. So instead of these just floating in space, they are above this chair rail, which really anchors the whole thing. Ooh, and there's a hutch with the books. I didn't actually remember that from the first time I looked at this, but this is exactly what I'm thinking with my hutch. Probably some plants, some books. So this one is really good. I just love Marion's style, and she gives me so many good ideas through her book. This one is called Making Your Home, or it's called Country House Style, Making Your Home a Country House. I love this book. I was looking through it last night, and it sparked an idea for this room makeover with a few of the gallery walls that it had in it, and I was studying the placement of the pictures, and that really got me thinking for this room. I find that the style that I really love, I can't really find on Pinterest. I definitely can't search the word farmhouse. All the wrong things come up for that. I a lot of times search country house, but then sometimes I get what I want, sometimes I don't. But this book really nails the cozy country collected feel that I love so much. And so I just love to study each and every detail and I'll leave books like this just sitting out around my house because I like how they look also. Got city farmhouse style. I got this one a few years back. It has a lot of quilts and slip covers and painted furniture and all that stuff I love. Ironstone. I recently picked up this one, Perfect English Farmhouse. And again, it just gives me an eye for the things that I should be looking for when I'm out at antique shops or thrift shops. Patterns, colors, textures that I maybe wouldn't have thought to bring into this house. Once I see it in the context of like a country bedroom like this, then I start thinking about it. And so that's what I love these design books for. I have a few more on my wish list, but they are really helping me with the layout and design of this room and picturing some of the things that I'm hoping to implement in a new way. So between that, Instagram saves, Pinterest saves, I think it's coming together in my head and now it's time to start collecting all the pieces. I also have an ottoman out in the barn that I found roadside. Somebody just had free on it. I wanna get new legs for it and make a slip cover for it. So that is gonna happen. I'm still trying to figure out how I'll lay out all the furniture. Once I get some of these specific dining room furniture pieces out of here, I think I'll be able to imagine the furniture layout just a bit better. But I will definitely be taking you along on this whole journey of designing this room. And ultimately there'll be a reveal whenever I get it all done. It won't be perfect, but it'll definitely be cozy and a living room, which is what I'm going for. All right, for dinner tonight, I'm going to make my orange chicken. This recipe I love. It's probably all of our favorite food. My daughter gets so excited when I make this. It's probably my favorite food. However, it is not my favorite thing to make. I have to be honest, this is one that if you have a little extra time in the afternoon, so my kids are all still doing their nap time. I explained to you my design process and now I have a little bit more time. And so I'm gonna make this, but it definitely is not one of those quickly throw together type of meals. So this is one where you put on music and you just enjoy yourself cooking if you have a little extra time. So to make it, I'm going to dip chicken, which I cut up into egg and then einkorn flour mixed with salt. I'm gonna fry it in lard, I still have some lard. And then once the chicken's all fried, I'm gonna set that aside and make a sauce with fresh squeezed orange juice, maple syrup, coconut aminos, you could also use soy sauce, and vinegar. And then I'm gonna serve it over some rice that I'm making and top it with scallions. So this is so good. If you want the exact recipe with all the measurements, I do have it over on the Farmhouse on Boone blog, so you can go over to farmhouseonboone.com, search orange chicken, and it'll all be there. Now I forgot to point out that the reason this recipe takes a while is mostly just the chicken frying. 
I like to make it in small batches so that way everything gets really crispy and nice. So if you make this recipe with just some sauteed chicken without the frying step, it actually is a really great weeknight dinner. It does not take a whole lot of extra time from anything else. The sauce comes together really easily. Then you just add rice and some sauteed chicken. So take out the frying step and you can enjoy this anytime. Personally, I love the frying though. It's so delicious. I'm also going to add a bit of cornstarch to thicken this sauce up a bit. Thank you for joining me on this day of homemaking. I left out the many loads of laundry we did today and the dishes we're about to do. Sometimes I just like to include the parts that are inspirational, but do know that all of that repetitive stuff like making beds and cleaning sheets definitely goes on here too i feel like there's only so much of that i can actually share before it's just like we get it you know you do laundry like everybody else but i hope that you enjoyed hearing about our living room makeover plans and some of the ideas that i have for the boys room as well as the meals that i made today i will leave links for all of those recipes that i have on the blog down in the description box below also be sure to check out fracture and use the code boon 22 to get 22 percent off your order of beautiful all-in-one frame and picture glass prints. You can find all of that in the description box below. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you are brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.